Foundation, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954-717-7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Good evening, and thank you for joining us here at You and Your Doctor. I'm your host, Melissa Santiago, and I'm very happy to present and introduce Dr. Jeffrey Stein. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for being with us. So I understand uh, that you want to focus mainly today on concierge medicine. What I'd like to do is sort of give the benefits of concierge medicine in the year 2017 and how it can benefit patients tremendously. Um, With Obamacare, uh, a lot of patients left a lot of doctor's offices because we could not get on the health care plans. And patients were getting frustrated because they weren't able to spend enough time with their doctor uh, and they were having to be seen in and out every two minutes. And patients were feeling that they weren't getting the attention they deserved. Uh, the concept came about 10 years ago, 15 right. years ago, and it has just taken off. It's been 10 to 15 years that concierge medicine has been available. About 10 years, yes. What brought it about? Because I, I you know, this is relatively new for me. I, I've never really heard much about concierge medicine, and I thought maybe it was something that was brought on because of the health care changes, um, but you're telling me it's 10 to 15 years. Yeah, well, it's <clears throat> I heard, first heard about it with a program by the name of MDVIP, which is, uh, I believe it was out of Seattle, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And um, it was a, uh, a concept where doctors were made available to their patients 24-7. And it was VIP medicine. And um, they were all over the country. And so if you're in Washington, D.C. or Chicago and you're an MDVIP, concierge patient, you could see that doctor at the drop of a hat. Um, There are a lot of hybrid models out there, doctors doing both uh, through other uh, concierge programs that are available in this country. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do our own model through a hybrid situation where we have some patients who are uh, grandfathered in, they're Holocaust survivors, or they've been with me for 25 years, and so their incomes are limited, and they're in their 90s, and we, we, you know, sort you of... make adjustments for them. Yeah, scholarship them, if you would. That's great. That's great. So, tell me a little bit about it. How does it come about, you know, when does somebody say, I'm going to consider concierge medicine. I want to learn more about it. Why would somebody think of that? Well, I think it's an individual choice. Some patients don't have the time to sit in the waiting room. Some patients don't have the time to access the subspecialty modules. Some patients feel as though they need that extra attention um, depending on their health care issues. Some patients who are more needy than others with, you know, might might have multiple medical problems Mm -hmm. and they require a little bit more uh, hands-on care. So are you saying that the difference between concierge medicine and just going traditionally to the doctor's office, there's, uh, the the benefit is, is that they can get to you a lot quicker and don't have to wait as long for an appointment? Yes, it's it's basically that it allows patients that extra benefit, but they're not treated any differently than a regular patient. It is really treated upon priority who who is the sickest patient who comes into the office. However, if it's a routine visit or if someone who has a cough and cold, they'll come right in. Mm -hmm. They won't have to wait. They go right to an exam room. Um, They're treated expeditiously. We expedite their... um, their treatment plan. If they need to get to a subspecialist, we expedite that as well. Um, it would be nice if we could do that with every Everyone, patient. Right. But the insurance company reimbursements have changed over the past 10 years. and Tremendously. The reimbursements have uh, been carved out so that it doesn't allow us to spend 30, 40, 50 minutes with each patient because of the healthcare changes. So this concept um, really benefits the patient. Mm-hmm. Um, it also helps the doctor that he can spend the time needed that patients deserve. Right. Yeah, you know, I have a personal experience myself with 
Obamacare and, uh, you know, I was an independent contractor and I had to get my health insurance through the marketplace. And all of a sudden I realized my doctor's not my doctor anymore. And whoever I did go see, I didn't know them. And I was in there for maybe 10 minutes and my insurance didn't cover anything. So would you say that that's probably why a lot of people do come to you for a concierge? Well, I think that patients come to me for referral for concierge because of just that, a referral from another patient. And they enjoy our practice and they enjoy Mm -hmm. my staff. Um, You know, I had a very dear friend of mine who was my patient for 10 years but he was my friend for 20 years and he was on Obamacare right. and we could not get on his health insurance. We just couldn't. And it was costing him $10,000 a year less to go on Obamacare. So he had to leave my practice. And yeah. I, I understood. I mean, of course, but patients who come to me through concierge medicine, mm-hmm. either do it out of their own personal needs or they, it's the kind of care they want. Right. Yes. That, that makes sense. Um, what what's the average uh, range of age that you know the patients are that come to see you for that? Um, I'd say the the our average right now is probably under the age of uh, sixty. Okay, that's um, surprising. It, it was when I first started this. I was, was expecting more of a geriatric um, predominance, and I was quite um, surprised in in terms of when we did the demographics and the age. Um, the bell curve was 80% under the age of 55. Wow. And I think it's because the working class um, person who really, or patient who really cannot wait in a waiting room because it costs them money or they have a job and they just can't afford to be sick, wants the ability to get in to see their doctor, get in, get out, and get on with their lives. And I think that's what motivates some of these patients mm-hmm. um, to do so. Okay. Now, how does it work with you? Do you, how does the payment work? Is it something that's done monthly, quarterly, annually? Um, we, you know, we have an annual charge. It goes from January to December. Um, we have made some exceptions in terms of helping patients make a payment over the you know, three months. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it becomes an accounting nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to help the patients in terms of, you know, financial assistance with that. Um, but it is one payment up front. Um, where there are probably about 30 or 40 concierge practices in the area. Um, as far as price range, they go anywhere from uh, 1500 to, you know, $5,000, $10,000 across the country. Uh, somewhere like in the city, New York City or Manhattan, I'm sorry, or L.A. or Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. and they can be $10,000. It's It depends what the market, um, you know, develops. Right, I understand. Now... As far as your services, once a patient pays the fee up front, which is cash only rate, it's not covered by insurances? Correct. Okay. So they pay the uh, the premium for you guys, for the retainer. And what does that include for them? So their, their annual fee includes access to me 24-7. To your cell phone? To my cell phone. Wow. They have a private email they have an actual private line into the office where there's not an automated, you know, press one, press two. You get two. a live person. You get a live person who answers that line for that patient. Um, and with that, you know, we, we try to help them with samples, extra samples for their medications that are expensive. If I know that they're on a medicine, it let's say cost $200 a month, mm-hmm. I'll try to get the pharmaceutical <laughs> rep to mm-hmm. help with some samples to sort of augment the cost of the concierge fee. Right. Um, But there's one uh, couple that are in their 70s and their bills are $500 a month for their pharmaceuticals. And uh, I've probably saved them easily their cost of their concierge fees um, in just their blood pressure and diabetes meds alone, which is great because then they're not paying the money. And it would be great if I could do that for every patient. But there is a business model that allows me to only do it for certain patients. Right. It makes sense for them in that, in that regard, if you have high healthcare expenses and you have maybe a chronic illness that constantly needs attention, then perhaps versus paying for insurance, uh, they can pay for the retainer. Well, the insurance has nothing to do with their insurance really is still their insurance. We, they still have to pay for their own health insurance. 
Do they do do all of your patients have health insurance? So I yeah. just kind of assume that they didn't have health insurance. No, every one of our patients, not everyone, but the majority of the patients have health insurance. Okay. This has nothing to do with their health care, their Blue Cross, United, Aetna. That has nothing to do with it. This is over thank goodness and beyond. for that, right? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> uh, we have some patients that are, you know, they, they can't get health insurance and they're on a cash pay basis. So we, you know, we yeah. discount for them. Yeah. Uh, we have our own lab in the, in the office. So if, mm-hmm. you know, the cost for, for submitting to a lab if you're a cash pay patient is astronomical. So we were able to discount lab fees for patients that are cash pay. Uh, we have a wonderful nurse practitioner in my office uh, named Peggy Zapantis. She's the, one of the smartest nurse practitioners I've ever had the pleasure of working with. She's amazing. She does, you know, some of the women's health care. She ran a mm-hmm. healthcare clinic uh, for her paps, and she's wonderful, and we have a wonderful staff. So combined with experience, I mean, you've got about 30 years experience under your belt. No? No. No? No, not that many. I'm not that 20? old. We'll call it 25. We'll come meet you in the middle. All right, we'll say it's 25, and then with the experience of your nurse practitioner, <laughs> um, you guys are you guys are pretty knowledgeable in what you're doing, and uh, you're located on in Boca. We're right? on Boca. We're on Glades Road, 9291 Glades Road. Okay, so that's that's West Boca. That's one mile west of the Turnpike. I, th- I think I know exactly which building that is. We're right yeah. next to Rooms to Go. Yeah, and... yeah, Macy's Furniture. Yep, right yep. between the two. Okay, we have, great. Um, uh, and I'm on staff at Boca Regional and West Boca Medical Center, so I have hospital privileges. Great the hospital. hospitals. Great hospitals. And um, your we, phone number uh, for for patients who are interested in learning more is five six one four eight three five five zero zero. Feel free to call his office to uh, get some more information if you have any questions. And uh, you know, concierge medicine. Now you've got me thinking about concierge medicine because. It's, uh, it is true. I do work full time, more than full time, actually. I'm a single mom also. I have a teenager at home and uh, I don't have time to, to go to the doctors. Or what's most frustrating is when I need an appointment immediately and I have to wait three weeks. That's, that's what's really frustrating sometimes. Well, and that, that's, you know, not only that, but if you were, let's say you were a, a traveling uh, young mother or you're a traveling individual, and you're in Philadelphia and you had a sore throat or you had an eye infection. What happens then? You'd call me on my cell phone Mm -hmm. and I'd be able to either via Skype or, you know, FaceTime you with to look at your eye or whatever and Mm -hmm. we could treat you over the phone on a weekend where typically you'd have to call, you know, one of the covering doctors. He may not call you back for a couple hours or Mm -hmm. that day or you're forced to go into a walk-in clinic that you don't trust. Or don't know and... Yeah. So with that, it gives you the benefit of, you know, having um, uh, the access to me when you're, you're, you know, you're at home or Away. with your your child or whatever. And that and that's what it's really designed for. For convenience. Um, growing up, I remember having, you know, call the doctor on his home phone, um, and so that's kind of the model that mm-hmm. we like to continue using. So I imagine with, with this personalized care that you offer and this VIP care that you offer, you can't, you, how many patients do you have? We limit, it's a very great question. Okay. In other words, we limit the number of patients per year. Because you need the time for each individual patient. Correct. Okay. So some of the practices are um, unlimited. So we limit ours to um, 300 patients per year. Once we're at 300, then we have a waiting list. And obviously there's a turnover, patients move, Mm -hmm. you know, some patients, unfortunately, um, as they get on in life, they, you know, they die. Mm -hmm. Um, um, But we have uh, a very low turnover rate, which is great. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to accommodate, you know, at a moment's notice. And it seems to work. Uh, We've been very successful. This is our fifth year. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, recently... um, I was named uh, Doctor of the Year for Boca Raton um, uh, by the city. That's um, amazing. So, Doctor was, of the Year, and that's know. that's that's in, that's internal medicine. That's primary care. That's well, it was all off all fields, and it was uh, that's amazing. Proclaimed by the mayor, and it was really kind of cool to have that kind of uh, accolade. Um, Absolutely, um, it's cool that you're here on our show with us. Oh, yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Doctor of the Year in Boca Raton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dr. Jeffrey Stein, that's great. I, um, 
wanted to ask, and I'm sure that people want to know, uh, in regards to concierge medicine, what do you think a, an individual should ask themselves before considering coming to see you or, or, or paying a retainer for, for the practice? I think what you would, if I was in their shoes, I mm -hmm. would probably ask myself, um, it's not only that will I only see a doctor once a year because it's like life insurance. You never know when you're going to need it. Um, and that's one of the uh, many questions I get. Well, you know, why would I spend the money if I only get it once a year? And it really isn't about the once a year visit. It really is about knowing that your doctor is there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one patient that was on a cruise ship and he had chest pain. And oh, no. he, uh, we needed, he needed to get our, uh, an EKG. So we emailed via um, uh, through the, you know, the system that mm -hmm. we had, and the EKG that they did on the ship was the same EKG that we had, and it would turn out to be just heartburn. But if there was, uh, it was an abnormal EKG, but it was the same EKG that was a year old. So they would otherwise, they would have had to airlift him off the cruise ship. Wow! And it really did save him thousands of dollars, and he was and it was the expenses. only. It was the only time he had ever seen me. It was one time we did the EKG for the year, but it was that experience yeah. that you know that he benefited from, yeah. and he and and luckily it wasn't anything serious. But I mean, could you imagine if it was something that was dire? Um, you know w what would happen in that event? I mean, well, he would have had to go through the route of being airlifted to a hospital and and worked up for chest pain that might have been cardiac. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, it was non-cardiac, but the EKG was. Um, paramount that we had something that we could email on a on a saturday because no doctors in the office on a no. saturday so we're able to save his trip save him the you know the exhaustion of having to come off a cruise ship right. the expenses of airlifting would have been astronomical i'm sure and he was able to complete his trip which was was a nice thing so i think what you should ask yourself is you know will this benefit me you know over the years mm -hmm. having my doctor you know available and, and when, a lot of times what we'll do is the patients who do it, we, 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 we don't charge them for their entire family if they have teenage children oh, come home on college. Work? So uh, it would be a perfect example. Let's say if your daughter was, you know, I don't know how old your daughter is, but if she was like 16 and mm -hmm. she had a sore throat and she couldn't get into her pediatrician, you know, we, we would accommodate her without charging you for her individual fee. Each individual is charged for the concierge, but we don't charge the children because or the, if their grandson comes home on, you know, visiting... We don't charge them for that. It's okay. just you know, so regular it's kind of like it. a family membership type deal. It's individualized, but mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we just don't charge them for each, you know, you don't family nickel member. and dime them. I, I wasn't going to say that, but that's <laughs> correct. That's exactly <laughs> the way. You know, we we try to be fair. Right. We also prorate it if you're a snowbird. Um, oh. If you're in, let's say, you come in in September and you leave in April, it's prorated for the amount. Unlike other concierge practices, we do prorate to save patients money. That's great. And that's key down here. I mean, everybody, almost everyone's a snowbird, except for mm -hmm. us. Well, we're here. <laughs> we're here for the, for the, for the duration. <laughs> that's great. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you, what do you like to do on your free time? Um, well, I'm the, I have uh, two wonderful teenage daughters. I just dropped my 18-year-old off at FSU. Oh, wow. And so she's How a freshman. That? How was that for mom? Uh, that was just horrifically depressing to drop your first daughter off for oh college. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the tears came. And um, so everything we, makes me cry with, uh, with my son. Any any little amazing thing that he does, he plays piano and, and I just You're passionate it, it about makes, it. It makes me cry. Yeah. <laughs> so I have uh, uh, my daughter eighteen, Savannah, she's you know, she's awesome. Hi Savannah. And uh, she's up at Tallahassee. Hopefully she should be in class. And then I have a senior at Spanish River, Avery who oh, is okay. uh, my other gorgeous uh, daughter, so she better be feeding the dogs right now. <laughs> um, we're very close. We love going to sporting events, uh, hockey games. I'm a oh, big who's your Florida, team? Florida Panthers. Of course, 100%. Huh? Are you guys originally from, from here, from Florida? No, originally I was born outside Philadelphia. I'm a uh, Philly boy, and oh, wow. uh, my Philly roots are uh, Go still Philly. strong. Go Philly. Go uh, Philly. Oh, yeah, you never leave your Philadelphia. And yeah. the Jersey Shore, uh, grew up with that. Um, love going to sporting events. Yeah. Love... Um, your daughters, are they into any sports or anything like that? Oh, they're, they're as tomboys you can get. They love going to... They have to I've taken Savannah to the hockey game since she was six weeks old. And oh, wow. <laughs> I guess she didn't have a choice, really. Uh, no. <laughs> no, she was, she was... She knows the players, and I have... There's some local players that are in town who are my patients. Awesome. Um, and, and I've taken sure care of... I'm sure that's interesting. Yeah, so... And they've retired, and they've been... Uh, 
uh, really great as far as coming to visit my daughters mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, dolphins, marlins, yeah. heat, love going to the So Victoria. you like basketball, baseball, football, you like it all, everything. Love it all. And the girls too. Yep. I work out. That's um, great. I do martial arts. Uh, what type? Uh, it's called American Kempo. Okay. Um, I have, I, I'm a fan of martial arts myself, actually. I've, I've done a Filipino Kali. Oh, really? And uh, uh, Chen style Tai Chi. Tai Chi? Also, okay. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. um, going for my, I just got my red belt and hopefully get my black belt by the next year. Very nice. Don't mess with this doctor, guys. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love going to the beach, just hanging out. Yeah. Um, yeah. What uh, beach do you normally go to? Uh, Delray. Okay. I uh, love Delray. I know. By the way. There's some good, great restaurants. You know, Sandbar. Uh, yes, actually, he's my patient. Uh, sandbar? Uh, the, uh, the, yes, I that, love Sandbar. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. They have fun. some really uh, fun individuals yeah, there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love going to uh, Maine um, in the summertime. Oh, New England. I uh, love New England. You love Especially New England. Maine. In the Maine, there's How about, about the New England Patriots? Do you love them? Let's cut you. Um, I love, uh, I want to go to Central America one day. Yeah. I'd love to go down to uh, Honduras. Yeah, uh, you like Honduras. My and, family's from Honduras. Really? Yep. Yep. Um, and Argentina, that would be my two trips that I'd love to see. Yeah. yeah. Play golf. I love golf. Um, yeah. You're in a perfect uh, area for golf, South Florida. I love Florida. golf. Love golf. I'm How s- often do you play a week? I play on weekends. I'm terrible, but I love golf. Are you terrible? No, I'm, well, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm competitive, let's put it that way. Um, okay, so you're hard on yourself. Good yep. to know. That's something you want from your doctor, right? From your primary care physician. I think so. <laughs> Perfectionist. Yep. Um, I was a pharmacist first with the University of South Carolina. How was that for you? Um, it was interesting <laughs> yeah. to go to uh, a school in the South when you were a Yankee, supposedly. And yeah. Back in the in the seventies, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, it was it was great, and I got my pharmacy degree, and I did retail pharmacy down here for three years. As a matter of fact, right across the street from my practices today. Uh huh. So my pharmacy background has really been. Um, uh, pivotal in uh, helping my patients too. That has really helped. Yeah, that's amazing. I did, it's so funny you say that because I did pharmaceuticals on the wholesale side. Oh, you did for three years myself, and uh, yeah, that was pretty interesting. It's only about three of us in the in the in the county. I think that were pharmacists first, and then uh, MDs, um, and it really uh, really does help. We have a sort of a s- small pharmacy in my office that we try to help patients mm-hmm. with some of the costs of some Do drugs. you have a compounding pharmacy in your We don't area? have a compounding pharmacy. Mm-hmm. We just have retail, uh, just some products that patients, if we could save them. So not only are you convenient with your concierge service, but you have the medicine right there in the, in the office for them as well. We do. That's we awesome. Do. So we have a, I have a dispensing license, which allows me to do it. That's um, great. As well as uh, medical marijuana. We, we just got certified for medical marijuana, which was great. Now let's talk about that. Medical marijuana. How often do you prescribe it? I, I had no idea that you did prescribe it. What, tell me about that because there's like this is new to us, and I'm hearing all s- sorts of perspectives on it. And you tell me. Well, at first I was a little bit adverse to it, um, and then more and more as I read the literature, there was mm-hmm. things done on 60 Minutes. I don't know if you saw it about uh, this young uh, child who had intractable seizures. And I did. Um, I did. It was see very that. moving. Um, and when I studied for the exam and took the exam, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm probably going to be getting a lot of substance abuse patients trying to... Probably, like with any controlled and, uh, substance. you know, it's been interesting. Uh, the majority of the patients I've been getting are geriatric patients who um, are, um, you know, with insomnia or chronic illnesses. And uh, I had this one gentleman, he was um, a delight, and he was in his late 80s, and he had never been able to sleep. And he had taken an edible given to him by one of his children, and he told me he had first <laughs> it was the first good night's sleep he had in forty years. That's amazing. So it is. Um, I think there is a, a place for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're seeing it really good for my MS patients. Uh, my how does it work for them? The your MS. I have a cousin who has MS. Actually, he's in his early twenties. I don't think anybody could actually tell you specifically pharmacologically mm-hmm. how it works. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as it. The, you know, the, the I meant like their experience with it. Have, are they having good experiences with it? You know, are you we're finding so that so new with it? I mean, yeah. these patients have, uh, like I said, we just started in January. And the laws just changed um, this they month. They sure did. So you could used to be have to wait ninety days before you could prescribe it. Now you can prescribe it immediately. Um, uh, we've had patients with inflammatory bowel disease, with colitis, Crohn's, um, and it helps that. Uh, it really does help patients with low back pain who have had you know, uh, spinal stenosis and uh-huh. chronic back pain, and it relaxes them, um, and it's been wonderful. 
Um, and I don't, I'm very judicious on who I prescribe it for. I'm sure. I'm sure you have to be careful. Yes. And you know, when I see these patients with certain diseases that are really not amendable to treatment and you see them getting better, um, you really... Become a believer, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. do. It's just one more modality that we can use to help patients. Um, right. And uh, it's been, you know, we only have a handful so far, mm -hmm. um, but our phones have been lighting up because they know that they've gotten referrals from other people. They know you've got the cannabis. Well, it's, it's not <laughs> cannabis. It's low <laughs> THC that we write for, but it's been, um, it's been very effective. It's very in the embryonic stages right now. I'm sure. And we're learning more and more about it. Um, you know, new information's coming out. But uh, how, how often, like, how many practices would you say are prescribing medical marijuana now? Are are you like one of few, or I think there. I mean, I haven't checked recently, but I think there's about fifty in the county. Um, you do it is in 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 Palm Beach County. Yes. Okay. There's an enormous amount of paperwork that goes in with it, and. You really have to stay on top of it because you really don't want to send up red flags to the DEA and you really want to be careful on how and who you're writing it for. And mm -hmm. It's a little tedious, but, you know, it, it does help some patients and uh, um, it's just amazing on how many geriatric patients have benefited from it. It's yeah. really astounding. Yeah. So uh, That's great. one more modality for our practice and our patients love it. I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, you... you you're telling us that first you were a pharmacist and then you went into medical school. What was that pivotal moment that made you decide, I'm going to leave pharmaceuticals and I'm going to start helping patients? I always wanted to go into medicine as, as I was a little boy. I remember my parents telling me that I always wanted to, I always told them I wanted to be a doctor. And um, my personal health issues that I had as a as a child um constituted uh um uh my impetus for going into medicine but i just didn't think financially i could afford it and when i went into pharmacy i figured well at least it would be a stepping stone and then when my daughters um uh, before i had children um before i went to medical school uh there was one day i remember that i was driving to the pharmacy on glades road as after my third year of doing retail and i said I got to start writing the prescriptions instead of filling them. Were there a lot of times that you saw maybe people were taking medicines that they shouldn't have been taken, or did you have anything like that that made you think? I think that I was I was astounded at how lack of um, discipline some doctors were when writing prescriptions, and it wasn't their fault. It's just that you only get three months of pharmacology in medical school, and oh. uh, we got you know we're doing five years of of education, so. I think that to learn as much as the pharmacists do for medical school training mm -hmm. is just, you know, there's a, just a huge difference. And like I said, it's, it really does help when we had, I had one patient, actually he was one of my mentors, uh, he was a retired physician, and he was um, in his 80s and he was still, uh, you know, um, he was getting short of breath. And uh, he went to the Cleveland Clinic, he went to his cardiologist, and um, I said, let's sit down and look at your medicines. And uh, he wasn't getting any answers. And I said, let's just change this one pill. Okay. And he, uh, he could go on the golf course and only hit on the practice range nine balls, and he would get short of breath. And after about six weeks of his changing his medicine, he can hit 25 balls, and he feels great. And, he and just, he's 80, and he feels great. He feels great. And we just—it was just one thing in the medicine. So it, you know, it kind of makes you feel good. Yeah, that you can I would see that so. one little thing. So I kind of, you know, pride myself on my knowledge, of my pharmacology, and try not to make any mistakes. Um, none of us are perfect. There's of a lot of so. great physicians in this town um, that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. And it's nice to know that you're in a community where you have two good hospitals and really good. Uh, yeah, amazing in. hospitals. Yep, great hospitals. Absolutely. Uh, and great food. Great food? Great food in this town. You think so? Which which restaurants would you say have oh, the best food? Oh, I can't food? say that on the air, can I? No? Yeah, of course you can. Why not? Oh, okay. What type of food? What type of uh, food do you like? Um, I like uh, sushi. There's a great sushi restaurant. I love restaurant. sushi. There's a great sushi restaurant on 18th Street called Rise. Okay. Uh, my favorite. I know that one. Do you really? Yes, I do. It's amazing. Yes. Uh, some great steakhouses. I'm a big component of moderate red meat intake. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> do you Delray. have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I take it with my Crestor. 
Um, there's some great <laughs> steakhouses in uh, Boca and Del Rey, I think, are really good. I went to one myself this weekend. You did? Yes, I did. Where? I went to New York Prime. It's great. Johnny Gio, one of the best general managers of all Amazing time, and Nick and Scott. Amazing food every time. I know the it management very well. The spot owners, on. The owner is a patient of mine. He was a really great guy, Jerry Greenbaum. Hello, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Right. Um, <laughs> but Johnny Gio's run that place. He's amazing. And Nick, um, cut 432 on the Ave in oh, yeah. Delray. Yep, I've and been there. And there's a really amazing restaurant in Delray over top the sandbar. It's called Ocean's <laughs> 50. It's an amazing, yes. they have great fresh fish. Yes. Um, it is, the atmosphere is unbelievable looking over the ocean. Yep, so, I've been there too. Oh, you have? Oh, it's, yeah. I love this town. I know this See, town. I've been here a long time, actually. I'm from New York, but I've been here 16, 17 years now. So there you go. Yeah. How so, about you? You moved around. No. no. I've been here since I was uh, 18 years old. I've oh, been here wow. since the 70s and never left. And where were you before that? I was in born Philly. In, I was in Philly, but I was raised in South Jersey, a really small, small country, rural town okay. outside Atlantic City. Okay. And uh, yeah, just never left. And uh, my sisters are up here. And uh, shout out to my sisters in Palm Beach and Stewart. <laughs> um, my mom, she's 90, God bless her. She lives in Boynton. Wow, God bless, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, since we're giving shout outs, hey, Dad, I know you're watching. <laughs> I love you. And uh, to my munchkin angel, I see you, babe. So uh, what else can we talk about? Um, what I'd like to, you know, just to emphasize to, you know, people who are, you know, um, looking into this, I think that, you know, I wouldn't dis you, you dissuade yourself from spending, you know, the money from doing concierge because, you know, like I, I, I tell this patient, you know, people have no problem spending, you know, $1,500 for TV or spending $100 a month, um, you know, eating out to restaurants. And right. this is about your health. And we really try to do a lot of preventative health care. We've picked up, you know, uh, so many things for patients as just doing preventative health care. Like um, what? Like what exactly for preventative we're actually going to go to break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with your second guest. Thank you so much. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At All County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. You and your doctor living longer and healthier, being sponsored by All County Healthcare, a Medicare certified agency. If you have any questions, call 1-888-717-7170 and ask for Maddie. She will answer any of your health care questions. This broadcast will be repeated next Tuesday at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on 95.3 FM and 1470 a.m. We are live streamed on All County Healthcare Inc. Facebook page and also on our website, www 
www.allcountyhealthcare.com. Well, now we have our second guest. I'm very happy to introduce our trauma surgeon, Dr. Nur Huss. Thank you. Thank you for so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. How was the ride in? Was there a lot of traffic? No, it was perfect. Yes? Even though it was, uh, you know, it's the afternoon, mm -hmm. no, no problem. Okay, I'm just going to move this over. Perfect. Perfect. So Dr. Huss is a general surgeon in uh, Delray Beach, Florida, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we're going to focus today on chest wall reconstruction, yes. traumatic chest wall reconstruction. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Okay. Yes, it sure is. Because I was looking, you know, and trauma surgeons have such a wide array of uh, services that they perform on, on a whim. So you have a really crazy lifestyle, I'm sure. Yeah, you have to be ready as you said, in a whim, to mm -hmm. be ready to take care of from head to toe. Yeah. Regardless of, of the multiple injuries, mm -hmm. you might be dealing with the chest, uh, heart injury, lung, legs, right. abdomen, liver, um, you name it. We have I, to I was it. also reading uh, about the responsibilities of a trauma surgeon, and you have to actually run around the ER and prioritize which uh, patients need to see you first. So you have to kind of... Yeah, that's uh, we call that triage, and, mm -hmm. and that is true. Um, I mean, you can imagine some people will require an emergent procedure to be done, and it's more important to take care of those that potentially would uh, die first. Right. So you have to sometimes make those tough calls. Who is going to be seen first? Who is going to be seen second? What am I going to do? And also within the same person, mm -hmm. they might have multiple injuries that will require multiple let's say surgeons. So um, then you're so working closely with orthopedic surgeons, uh, neurosurgeons. neurosurgeons. Yes. Very interesting stuff. You're based out of Delray Beach Medical Center, right? Correct. It's a level one trauma center okay. in uh, South Florida. Uh -huh. And um, we are basically open. It's it's interesting uh, and, and extremely gratifying to, to be able to do that. I'm sure the uh, the adrenaline kicks in while you're at work and something serious comes in. I think so. It's, um, you know, you never know what's going to roll in. All right. you get is, is a message saying there's a trauma coming in and, mm -hmm. and some sort of uh, estimated time of arrival. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, three minutes, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. And then in your mind, you have to run through, okay, this is, you get a, a bit of something, whether it's a fall or... A, car crash or a gunshot wound or a motorcycle mm -hmm. etc and you have to formulate immediately some sort of a rudimentary plan and then as things roll you mind have you to change times it. 10 yes <laughs> <laughs> wow that takes a lot of talent i you know that's that's pretty amazing i'm very glad that you decided to join us today and uh let's talk about a little bit about the chest wall reconstruction why would that why would somebody need chest wall reconstruction? So imagine that um, someone has either fallen from, even from standing. This is a common injury that, mm -hmm. that we see. Um, extremely common. Simply you uh, strip a trip in a fall, a car crash, a motorcycle crash, anything that results in a person falling down from height. Sometimes it's not even that high. You know, fall from standing is five, six feet that's oftentimes enough to, uh, to break ribs. And up until fairly recently, we would have no real solution to it. We would just say, hey, we're sorry, you have a broken rib. There's some pain medication. Relax for two months, maybe three months. And uh, it'll move it, back into place. Or sometimes it does work? and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> You know, and, and, and that's where the issue is. Let's say, uh, especially on uh, high-speed motorcycle crashes uh -huh. or car crashes. Oh, man, I see those guys zipping on 95, and I get so nervous. For I mean, I'm a mom, so I, yeah. I get, oh, my goodness, that person, what if the driver doesn't see them coming through? It's, it's pretty scary. You hear about motorcycle crashes all so, the time. You know, a lot of these are obviously emergent. Uh-huh. Um, but some of them are semi-elective in a sense that Someone had a, their ribs broken, doesn't matter how. Let's say they fell from a stool, from a ladder, from, from standing, uh -huh. and they had two or three ribs that broke. And maybe one of them did not heal appropriately. And then they come to the office complaining that they feel um, 
a clicking sound or every time they bend over, they all of a sudden get, they lose their wind, so mm, to speak, yes. or they can't take a full breath because of pain that is sharp. Uh, they complain they cannot sit, I'm sorry, lay down on that side. They cannot go to sleep on that side. Uh, they can, some of them complain that they can't go back to their jobs. Wow. Uh, so it can be debilitating. Most of the time it heals. Mm-hmm. Um, but oftentimes when the ribs are displaced, you know, uh, meaning if this is a rib uh-huh. and it's displaced more than 100% of the width of the ribs, then as you breathe... There's going to be movement. There is movement. It can tear the lungs inside. It can tear vessels, nerves. Uh, so again, it, it, it oftentimes heals and most of the time it does, but certain fractures and certain injuries do not heal appropriately. Hmm. And that's where the chest wall reconstruction part comes into play. Wow. It's amazing how fragile the human body is. No? At the same time, it's, it's extremely resilient. Yeah? You know, because if you think about the forces that um, took part to cause these injuries are, are amazing. It's, it's an amazing amount of force that it takes to break someone's rib cage. And at the same time, it protects all our you know, organs. vital organs behind right. it. Right. So it's it's amazing that um, it, it it works effectively, mm-hmm. but sometimes it needs help. That, yeah, uh, and that's heal. when you come in. Yes. So um, I started this when I had um, a few motorcycle police officers that were injured in a similar fashion. Okay. There are actually four of them. And we basically control their pain. So here, there's some pain medication, time will pass, mm-hmm. and things will heal. Well, they healed, but they didn't heal well. And none of those four were able to go back to, to work do their fully. job. To work fully. Oh, yeah, wow. They, they, they were involved then with uh, pain clinics. Right. And they did desk jobs, but they could not do what they used to do. Um, until one of them picked up on it on the internet and uh, came to me and asked me, can, can I do that for him? At the time, he would only do it um, emergently. And uh, basically what happened was, I um, said, fine, and we repaired his ribs. Within three months, he was able to go back on his motorcycle. Oh, really? So no more a desk job. And then... He changed his life. Changed back his life. He's, he, he gained back his life, I should say. That's great. And... Soon after, his three other buddies say, hey, you know, maybe you can do the same for me. And uh, those were my first four that I did semi-elective in a sense that this is already now six, seven, eight months after the injury. Right. And clearly they did not go back to normal. Okay. And now they are. And all of them are now back to work, back to work. doing what they love. Yes. That's great. And um, how, yeah. how, many, how many procedures would you say you do... On a monthly basis, and are they all at the hospital, or do you do some outpatient as well? So these are all inpatient. Okay. Um, we've done um, quite a lot for the past seven years. I don't even know, but I mean, it's hundreds. In one um, in 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 one year. In one year for this particular type, um, I have to look. Cause how about you yourself? How many how many surgeries would you say you? It, for trauma, thousands. In this particular instance, it's probably measured in hundreds, a uh-huh. couple hundreds. Um, That's incredible. It's it's uh, also you realize that you can't predict when something is coming. You know, it's not the right, regular it's type. It's trauma. You can't predict when bad things happen, right. but invariably they do. A lot. A lot. <laughs> and uh, somebody has to take care of it. Well, thank goodness you're here. So you have? Do you have a, a practice yourself? I do. Are I, you on Linton? I work in uh, Del Rey, yes, in uh, Linton Boulevard. Okay. Um, we also do general surgery. Okay. Um, what kind of general surgeries? So anywhere from hernia repairs, uh-huh. uh, whether it's uh, groin hernias, we call that inguinal hernias. How does that work? Because I hear about these things and I, I really don't know what they are. I know a hernia can be had from lifting something that's too heavy yes that's all i know so that that is the classic <laughs> way if somebody overstrains themselves in a period of time over years you basically have 
something, an internal organ mm -hmm. that is pushing against our abdominal wall. Right. And when there's a defect with enough time and enough effort and enough repetitive motion, the defect becomes bigger and bigger until, let's say, a piece of intestines get kind of sticks out. Oh. Oftentimes, it's not a problem because you can push it back in, but it just usually doesn't get better. It just, the hole gets bigger. At some point, a piece of intestines gets stuck. Then it's an emergency. So you're basically doing any kind of surgery having to do with major organs, any, anything in the midsection any of the body? Midsection, uh, mostly, let's say, abdomen and chest. Abdomen okay. and chest, yeah. yeah, where all the important stuff is. Well, it's, kind well, of it's a, all important, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, Linton Boulevard. So, how may, tell me about your staff. What do, you, um, what do you have going on in your office? Do you have a couple of physicians? Is it just yes, yourself? Yes, I have a partner. His name is uh, Eugenio Rodriguez. Okay. And uh, we have... Um, wonderful staff that uh, helps us uh, see the patients right take care of all their needs when they're there mm -hmm. make sure that uh, appointments are done in a timely mm -hmm. fashion make sure that uh, everything related to their insurance is set um, it's it's a well-oiled machine and it, it takes quite a lot of effort especially in today's age to to deal with um, insurance companies yeah it um, sure does yeah and uh, the office is uh, on essentially on Linton and Military. Okay. Um, so it's close. I know the area. Yeah, yeah it's not far at all. And um, you know we're, we're fairly busy, both with. How many patients a day? A day, oof, uh, probably daily in the hospital about 20, 20, 25. So you round on twenty to twenty-five patients in the hospital. Yeah, probably on the average, I would say that many. Daily. Daily. That is a lot. And then uh, we have office visits. That between are, me and my partner. These are mostly pre-op and post-op. Pre-op, post-ops, mm -hmm. exactly. I would say another anywhere between probably another 10 to 20. So on a daily basis, approximately anywhere between 30 to 40 people. So you, you've got your reps in. You know you know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, you have to. Lots of practice here. Yeah, plenty of practice. That's great. Uh, so how long have you been practicing? Um, since 2012, I'm sorry, since 2010. Since 2010, okay. Um, in this capacity. In this capacity. Yeah. So you went to uh, University of Miami? Correct. What was that like? Um, that was a great experience. Yeah, you had a good time? Uh, yeah, I'm in South Florida, University of Miami. I did my residency in Mount Sinai Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, my mother works at the Mount Sinai in New York, though. Oh, in the New York? In the New York, yeah. She, this one is in Miami Beach. Right. That's and, um, that's nice. It's uh, also a wonderful experience, um, wealth of uh, cases, which is what you want in your training. You right. want basically to be able to see everything mm -hmm. and, and see a lot of it. And we were fortunate that South Florida provided that. Yeah. Because you have all wealth of lives, you know, you have yeah. uh, diseases from acute to chronic, and, and that's what you want in your training. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit, actually, a lot of it. A lot of bit of everything. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. we, and I, I feel that exactly that's what we got. How long have you been in Florida? Or are you f from Florida originally? Originally, or? I'm from Israel. Okay. So I was, I was born and raised in Israel, mm -hmm. in Florida since uh, 89, 1989. So it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. That's a while. Uh, so you've, uh, have you always been out of Delray or did you move around Florida? I, prior to Delray, I was in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Um, and uh, then I moved down uh, for family reasons. And uh, now I'm in Delray. I'm, I'm happy that uh, I've made that transition. Yeah. I have a great partner um, at work mm -hmm. and uh, we work very well together we well, oftentimes cover the surgeries we do together and it's I just see. more efficient this way that's great so you both can be at the, in the same room oh yeah performing surgery yeah. that's great so what's that like do you guys have music playing in the background while you're Always. doing your procedures yes. really yeah. tell me about that what type of music so, do you guys put on um anywhere i like everything yeah. so and i try to also please everybody that is in the room <laughs> And but you can't please everyone. I can try. I can try. You know? <laughs> so, so we have all forms of music. You, I'm sure a lot of classic it, rock it. and rock. Uh, I mean everything. Everything. Literally everything. Jazz, reggae. You name it. It's there. That's great. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting stuff.
So what else would you like to discuss? We talked about the chest reconstructive surgery. I know that you have a broad spectrum of things that you do and services that you perform. Tell me, tell me your, your favorite thing to do. My favorite is, um, actually, I guess the two most favorites would be the chest wall reconstruction, which uh -huh. is what we discussed. And uh, after that would be abdominal wall reconstruction. So for the abdominal wall reconstruction, that is very large hernias that most other surgeons don't want to touch. And so why is that? Is it because it's a higher risk or? Higher risk, more challenging, takes longer, more complex. Mm -hmm. um, but you love those. I love those. I love <laughs> the challenge and uh, have uh, great patients that are extremely happy and, and grateful. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's extremely gratifying also to be able to help someone especially those that, you know, they went to a few other physicians and they were told no. Right. And then you're the one that says, You're their saving, I can saving grace, you know? right. And, and especially when you can do it and, and uh, you know, you're confident in, and able to do so. Mm -hmm. And the outcome is such that they're, you know, extremely... Well, I mean, you right. telling us about the four police officers that were able to go back to work after yeah, being out of work, example. that's a... I mean, Big we have example. countless uh, such as that, and I've been very fortunate to have those. Um, How much of your trauma would you say is pediatric? In Delray, is, there's not a lot. It's very small. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just the, the nature of the area is such that pediatric trauma right. does not take a high volume. Um, I, in my experience, I've done a lot of pediatric trauma uh, because where I was uh, prior, mm -hmm. We had uh, a large pediatric population, and I, I enjoy that too. It's a completely different ball game, I'm and sure. um, you know has its own stressors and its own things you have to focus and and yeah. uh, and, and pitfalls and and techniques that are completely different and unique to pediatrics. Uh, here, not that much. So you get a lot of slip and falls, auto a lot accidents. Of slip and falls, auto accidents constantly. Constant auto accidents. Motorcycles. Accident, I'm sure. I mean, it's it's Florida. The weather is beautiful. So young, usually. younger, a lot of younger people, or would you, what would you say? Is it like all age ranges it's that you all see? All age ranges. Mm -hmm. it, it is literally all. Um, and and the Boca del Rey area is probably more advanced in age on, on, as a whole. It's a great place to retire. So yeah, and there are a lot of retiree from, uh, you know, New York, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, there are still quite a lot of young people mm -hmm. and acting crazy. Acting crazy, <laughs> especially when <laughs> the weather is nice and it's nice and warm outside, uh -huh. and motorcycles yep. provide colleges that. down here. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and then you have. Uh, you know, the not so nice things, uh, the crime related, stabbing, shooting that people don't realize most are not on TV, but they do occur. Yeah. And uh, so we literally, you, you just don't know. You know, you might start in the morning mm -hmm. with somebody that was, um, for example, last night. We had um, a guy that was, let's say, hit by a truck with a mirror as he was on the side of the road. Oh, my goodness. And had all damage to the face <gasps> and everything that dealt with that. How awful. And then immediately after, there were two people that were involved in a car crash where the car hit a semi-trailer and rolled over. Oh, my. And at the same time, a motorcycle crash, you know, came. So you so had three, all, the three different traumas all at the same time? Yeah, and then a fourth one arrived, yes. Oh, my goodness. So now you have to decide, okay, who I'm going to do who first. Who needs you the most. Who needs the most and what do I need to do? And, you know, you have to make decisions. So quick that, thinking. Yes. Wow. And there's no way back, right? It's a one-way street. I would be terrible at that job. <laughs> and you can't vacillate. Should I do this? Should I no, you got to, you know, make a plan, yeah. stick with it, and, and yeah. you know. I've read there's a lot, a lot, a lot of time and training that you put in in order to be where you are today. Right? I think that's true in... In, in most in fields, most but field. especially trauma. I mean, I, I see... In, in this case, it, it might be true because you, you literally... You know, you got to be this uh, sort of jack of all trades. Right. Again, I, there's I need not to just this one thing that you right. do and you perfect and you're perfecting your craft. No, there's like a hundred things you have to do and be perfect at. Yeah, at the same time. At the same time, you know? right. So I need to be able to, um, and sometimes things come in, in series. Mm -hmm. For example, a couple, two weeks ago, we had 
three people that attempted suicide by slashing their throat. Um, what a way to go. Yeah, but somebody had to... Find know, them? Find, deal with that. And then luckily, they're unsuccessful, not due to lack of trying, but uh, we managed to... Stabilize the, stabilize three, the three and, people. And repair all three of them. They hopefully have another we'll chance to, to, to get help with their issues that they're right. going through. That's but, incredible. Uh, and, you, you, you know, you just don't know what's going to appear at the so same time. So you always have something interesting to always. talk about at the dinner table after work, huh? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not necessarily the best for Probably dinner not conversation. Probably dinner time, but, right. <laughs> but yes, you know, it's, that's, it's, it's there. That's pretty intense, I'm sure. So that's that's the emergency part. And then we have also the more relaxed uh, elective. Surgeries. Right, the elective the hernias, surgeries. The that was going to be my next question, actually. Um, when would a patient find themselves in your office, other than just trauma, you know, other than coming to see you after you perform the surgery at the hospital? Do some patients get referred to you by other doctors? Yes. So we do a lot of the, what I consider, bread and butter general surgery. Okay. Gallbladder surgery, laparoscopic. Uh, we do a lot of laparoscopic surgery. This is minimally invasive, mm -hmm. you know, with a camera. Uh, so gallbladder surgery, hernia operations are the most common in general surgery. And um, that would be the, the most elective type referrals that we get. Um, anywhere from that, including um, the abdomen or the chest. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So if, uh, if any of you want to ask uh, Dr. Huss any questions or you want to get in contact with his office, you can reach them at 561 Three three zero four six nine five. They are based out of Delray. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. We do. We're very honored to have you on, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Good thank night you. to you all. Thank you for joining you and your doctor, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.